the third cross, crucify the habits. The third jihad is jihad against habits. The sin that enters from the senses becomes a thought, and the thought, when it persists, completely converts into a doer of sins. What is an angry man? It's a man that has become accustomed to getting angry. But how did it start? It started when he didn't crucify the things that irritated him. The person who was angry didn't crucify the will or the senses or the thoughts and so became an angered person. He got accustomed to being angry. You have not yet resisted the bloodshed. When you get angry, you have to strive and control yourself. Crucify your tongue against any bad word. Crucify your angry face because you have the image of Christ and your face should be shining. Flee from the situation to refrain from making a mistake. All these need a jihad. The first type of cross is jihad against sin, or what is sometimes called the cross of fleeing. The second type of cross is spiritual building. You need to not only flee and resist evil thoughts, senses, habits, and behaviors, but you must also build. Therefore, Christ gave us two parables when he said that everyone has to sit and count the cost of building a tower. Then the spiritual life is either building a, a tower, tower or fighting in a war. Luke 14, 28-33 You flee, resist, and exchange wrong with right. The spiritual building that you are building makes you weary. For example, the cross of prayer. Is prayer considered a cross? Of course. When a person says that he will pray when he feels like it, this means that, he, that his prayer does not contain any kind of crosses. Why? because he is praying without any tiredness or effort. He doesn't want those. If you stand up to pray while you are tired, this is a cross. Even if you pray with no focus and you try to focus, when you are tired, you say, I will stand because it is not acceptable to pray while I am sitting down because our God deserves prostrating. When you raise your hands while you are tired, do you remember Moses the prophet when he, when he started praying? He raised his hands as he used to do. Something surprised the people. After many hours, his hands would fall. He was an old man. When his hands went down, the, Am the Amalekites would start defeating the Israelites. The devils defeat God's children. So they told Moses, keep your hands up because when you, when you look like the cross, it gives us victory. Another story. Remember St. Justina and the magician Cyprian? who was very famous in Antioch. He was dealing with demons in his days as we see each other today. A prince asks Cyprian to get Justina to fall in love with him and he will give him whatever he wants. Cyprian said it was not an easy mission. He asked the devil to bring Justina to love the boy. The devil could not be because each time he went to her, he found her raising her hands and praying. So he returned having been defeated. Cyprian began getting angry with the devil, saying, What's wrong? If you do not bring her to me, I will be a Christian. Cyprian was the devil's best client. He cannot afford to lose him. So the devil took the form of Justina and appeared to Cyprian. Out of a great joy, Cyprian said to her, Welcome, queen of women, Justina. Then the devil evaporated once he heard her name. Cyprian went running to Justina and asked her to teach him how she is stronger than him. I am a famous magician in the world. All demons are working for me. How did you defeat me? What do you know in the world of power to defeat me? She said, I do nothing except that I pray. I raise my hands and pray. He said, That's it? Then he started to challenge demons and continued fighting them for years. In the end, he became a bishop, a great saint, and a martyr. The Cross of Prayer Do you crucify yourself in prayer? Or do you look for the short divine liturgy, the one that the priest runs through, through very quickly? When we worship, do we put our head on the couch in front of us and think to ourselves, it's not forbidden that we sleep a little bit? All this means we're not looking to get tired. We're looking for comfort. It means that I do not want to be crucified. Whereas the saints were taking a long time because they wanted to get tired, in addition to their love, of our Lord. They were happy because they are standing with God. 
They saw it as the least thing that they could offer God. Your body was crucified for us, Lord. What can I offer you? The altar in the divine liturgy is a witness to God's love. God, Christ crucified is on the altar for our sake. The priest, deacons, and people are crucified for him. That's why the person who pampers himself with respect to prayer is not suitable for standing in this place. Do you understand that this atmosphere is at the peak of holiness and love? Christ is being crucified, and we are being crucified by prostrating, fasting, standing, getting tired, praising continuously, etc. All these are expressions of our sharing in his cross as much as we can. Someone says, what's wrong if I take communion without fasting? Or if I come five minutes before communion? All these mean that he does not want a cross. In the cross of spiritual building, there is the cross of fasting. Same idea. Fasting is, is an expression of being crucified with Christ, sharing his pain. That's why when they asked Jesus how come his disciples do not fast, he told them, wait, until the bridegroom is lifted, that is, is crucified. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast in those days, Luke 5.35. When they see me on the cross, they will learn fasting. They will fast, and they will fast multiple days at a time, not eating or drinking to partake in my cross. Christian fasting is an expression of love. Is there any bride who can sit and eat while her bridegroom is in pain? How? She cannot because she is in pain with him. Our church loves fasting, and so we fast all year, all year round. And we do not oppose it, unless we do not want to carry the cross. Saints love fasting as it's an opportunity to carry the cross. When they are offered food, they think about it many times before eating. They are afraid to eat. It's as if they are taking off the cross. The saints are afraid to sleep, but we are afraid to stay up late keeping vigil. One of the great father monks said there are two things that he hates in life, eating and sleeping, which are the very two things we love most. He hates them because he feels that they force him to take off the cross. When he eats, drinks, and sleeps, he is obeying his desire and he takes off the cross. When Christ says, watch, this means partake with me in the cross. Do not forget that the meaning of watch became clear the night of the cross. When he was going to the cross, he was in severe pain and exhaustion, psychologically and physically. He stayed up, and when he returned, he found that his disciples fell asleep. He said to them, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Matthew twenty six forty one. What? You could not watch with me one hour? While Christ is crucified, he finds us eating, drinking, and sleeping. From his cross, he blames us, saying, Were you not able to watch with me for one hour? Were you not able to get hungry with me for one hour? Were you not able to get thirsty with me for one hour? Were you not able to stand with me? I'm standing on a nail while you stand on the floor. Could you not stand with me for one hour to pray before you sleep? Could you not watch with me one hour? That's blame. In this verse, Jesus is blaming from the cross. It has its power. We have to carry our cross so we can belong to him. Otherwise, he will say, I do not know you, as in Matthew twenty-five twelve. The first cross is jihad against sin or fleeing from sin. The second cross is spiritual building, which includes all spiritual works. Every spiritual deed must cause fatigue. Like when reading the Bible, we need to get tired. If I'm sleepy, I won't say to myself, I'll read while lying in my bed. There needs to be a cross when we read the Bible, sit in the office or at a table or the like. The more you suffer, the more blessings you receive, and the more you taste the beauty of God's word. However, so long as you seek comfort, you will not taste the cross or its meaning. All the works of spiritual building, spiritual vigils, praising, fasting, etc., are crosses.